your friendly neighbourhood Slytherin Rebecca Felgate right here. I've got a friend joining me for this video. Oh! Yes, here I am. Did someone order a Hufflepuff? I ordered a Hufflepuff. Dial a puff. There he is. Danny Burke. It's not the actual number, is it? <laughs> yeah, 110. Puff. Puff. So I hope you're enjoying this Harry Potter content that we're making on the channel. You may recognise Danny from Most Amazing Top 10. Ooh, and also our Harry Potter House challenges, where Hufflepuff is actually making a comeback. Yeah, we, you know, it's a slow but steady game. We're gonna you win. Made a really good polyjuice potion. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what won me the whole thing. And today we are going to give you the seven surprising facts about Hufflepuff, the greatest house apart from Slytherin. I don't know about that. <laughs> All right, our first fact, J.K. Rowling herself has said that now is the dawn of the age of the Hufflepuff. Oh. who are we to argue with that? You've got a new Scaramander bringing it up, so... Yeah, exactly. I don't see any Slytherin movies coming out recently. There needs to be. <sighs> Zero. <laughs> So interesting that it is the dawn of the age of Hufflepuff, JK Rowling herself, a Gryffindor, has said that in many, many ways, Hufflepuff is her favourite house. So, I mean, that's high praise from the Queen. And the Gryffindor has never been wrong, ever. <laughs> no, I mean, never. No. Never. Especially not Gryffindor Paul. <laughs> So yes, if you wanted any more proof, J.K. Rowling's eldest daughter, Jessica, even she said that Hufflepuff was her favourite house. Who is there out there repping for Slytherin? That's my question. <laughs> Not the actual creator of Harry Potter. She hates us, we know that. So our next fact is, Hufflepuff is the house of foodies. You're a bit of a foodie. I am! Yeah. I love food. <laughs> okay, so the evidence behind this, you've only got to look at the house heirlooms. That's the word we're going for, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Heirlooms. So we had Godric Gryffindor, he had a sword. We had Rowena Ravenclaw's diadem. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Slytherin's locket. Lock it. Lock lock it. It. And finally, we had Helga Hufflepuff's cup. Now, she obviously uses to drink wine out of. Yeah, glorious wine. And if you like good wine, you pair that with good food, it's obvious that she loved food. Oh yeah, she did. She was an absolute major babe as well, Helga Hufflepuff. On her chocolate frog card, it even says it. Apparently, she was very, very well known for her food charms. Now, confirm or deny the Hufflepuff uh, common room is nearest to the kitchens, and I've heard that you guys are very good friends with the house elves who let you in for midnight feasts. Yeah, obviously it makes total sense. I mean, there's no point in making friends with humans because humans won't get you food, house elves will get you food. And also, as everyone knows, Hufflepuffs are the best at herbology, and I really can't think of a more kind of food related subject at Hogwarts. I think Anything to do with herbology can help you produce food. Oh, 100%. Okay, for our next fact, not only is Hufflepuff the house of people who like to eat, it's also the house of people who love drink and love to have fun. Funsters, you know. This say. sounds like I should have been in Hufflepuff straight off the bat because I like food, drink and fun. It's never too late to join us. I, the Sorting Hats decision <laughs> is final. So as we know, Helga Hufflepuff loved to swill her wine in her cup, but you guys are always partying in the common room. With the house elves. In fact, I've heard there's a Hufflepuff connection, Rebecca, with probably the best place I could think of to get food and drink, Hogsmeade. Yeah, that's right. Hengus of Woodcroft, the Hogsmeade founder, was a Hufflepuff. And I bet he really, really enjoyed swilling a butterbeer or two in the three broomsticks. So for our next fact, Hufflepuff are a group of people that love other people too. Hufflepuff is the only non-elitist house. Said Slytherin will teach those whose ancestry is purest. Said Ravenclaw will teach those whose intelligence is surest. Said Gryffindor will teach all of those with brave deeds to their name. Said Hufflepuff, I'll teach the lot and treat them just the same. You're a house of hippies, aren't you? Peace and love, man. Peace and love. Our next fact is, actually, they kind of share something with Slytherin. If you cross them, they will get you. Yeah, anyone can see this because the house animal is, of course, a badger. Now, on the surface, badgers kind of seem cute, maybe even cuddly, but don't try and cuddle one because they will probably bite your face off. <laughs> very vicious. Very, are you very vicious? I, I won't bite your face off. Probably, uh, I don't know. Unless we cross you. Poke it. Ugh. That's as far as I'll go. <laughs> And if you want evidence of Hufflepuff's fighting for what is right, then look no further than the actual battle of Hogwarts. Obviously, all the Slytherins just, you know, pretty much left and ran away. A lot of the Ravenclaws also did the same, but the Hufflepuffs were the ones who all stayed and helped the Gryffindors fight the Death Eaters. And I think that's pretty brave. I think that's pretty brave. Let it be known, if I was at the Battle of Hogwarts, I would have been there, the sole Slytherin. Easy to say that now. Eating a cheese and fighting crime. <laughs> 
All right, so we've been bigging up Hufflepuff as being very honourable and right, but our next fact is that Hufflepuff kind of has a bit of a dirty secret. Mm-hmm, that's right. Poster boy Cedric Diggory, the pride and joy of Hufflepuff. Had he not died in the Triwizard Tournament, he was going to turn out to be a Death Eater. Evil. He's evil. Everyone has evil people, not just Slytherins. So a lot of fans do have actually a kind of contentious views about this, but JK Rowling did say that had he survived the Triwizard Tournament, Cedric Diggory would have turned to the dark. He would have been so upset about the whole ordeal, he would have started following Lord Voldemort. Now this is all revealed in the eighth instalment, actually a play, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Okay, so he might have gone off the rails, but come on, I mean, overall, we've still produced the fewest dark wizards out of all the different houses. I knew, I saw that one coming. Slytherins are nice, I promise. Slytherins are like the factory for dark wizards. No, but also great wizards. Great, great, wizards. great dark wizards. Great dark wizards. <laughs> you make a great dark wizard. And now for our final fact, despite what Draco Malfoy has said about Hufflepuff, we've actually produced some of the greatest wizards of all time. Yeah, as we said, Newt Scamander, absolute Hufflepuff. He was the author of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and I think we're going to hear a bit more from him very, very soon. Also, we have Boss Witches. We have Tonks and Hannah Abbott, who were both in Hufflepuff. Also, Tonks' child, Teddy, he also got sorted into Hufflepuff. So, some great witches and wizards there. A kid called Teddy in a house called Hufflepuff. Yeah. That's like the cutest thing ever. <laughs> Hi, I'm Teddy from Hufflepuff. <laughs> Me and my friend. And we've also got some real life Hufflepuffs. We've got John Green from the Vlogbrothers. Really? Deadpool. Deadpool, yeah, I know, I read that. He's a Hufflepuff. I, I can't get my head around how Deadpool is, is a Hufflepuff. But I love it. I think that's what I'm saying. It's not all about the Gryffindors. Deadpool's a Hufflepuff. And also we have John Fogler. Also, there is one incredible Hufflepuff out there, Danny Burke with Most Amazing Top 10, the Hufflepuff to end all Hufflepuffs, including Deadpool. I can't believe uh, Deadpool got in this, this video and I didn't. Why wasn't I mentioned? <laughs> you were here. You're right here. True, I am literally in the Hosting, video. You made this video. So, Danny, who is your favourite Hufflepuff? Uh, I'd have to say my favourite Hufflepuff is someone who I can't believe hasn't been mentioned so far, Professor Sprout. Oh, Professor Sprout. Wow, what a babe. Of herbology. I think, you know, the way she handles those mandrakes. I don't know <laughs> does what, something for you, I, does I, it? I don't know where that's going. Like I don't know where that was going, but uh, we'll leave it at that. Oh, <laughs> the way she handles those mandrakes. <laughs> well, I think that is an excellent way to end that video. Danny's going to hop off thinking about Professor Sprouts and her mandrakes, and I'm just going to slither in around plotting my evil schemes, as I always do. Thank you so much, Danny Burke, for joining me. For now, I'm Rebecca Felgate, your friendly neighbourhood Slytherin. If you like this video, make sure you give it a good thumbs up, share it with a friend, and head on over to Danny Burke's channel, where he also has some treats for you. We'll see you next time. Bye.